Hi, I'm Glenn Orpheus, and this is my review of a Cyrusher XF200 electric city bike. So, before we dive in and take a closer look at everything, who is this bike for? Well, this is very much a ladies bike, or for the older gentleman that just can't get his leg over anymore. A bike primarily designed for city or town riding. However, it's still quite versatile and will travel over many different terrains. Okay, so moving on, let's take a look at what's on offer here. Starting at the front, we have the 20 inch quick release front wheel. It has a 160 mm front disc brake system that cuts power to the motor when engaged. It has a fitted front wheel fender. The bike also includes front fork suspensions with 90 mm of travel. Also, we can see the front LED headlight that produces 250 lumens to help see your way during darker hours and get yourself noticed by other road users. Moving on to the back left of the bike, you can see again we have the 160mm disc brake system for the rear wheel. A kickstand which holds the bike perfectly, however I'm not sure how this would fare if you had something weighty on the back parcel shelf. On the right side of the bike we have a 200mm crank set with aluminum bash guard. It also comes with a plastic chain guard. Now, I understand that it's plastic to reduce the overall weight of the bike, but I do feel an aluminum chain guard would have been better. Housed into the rear wheel, we have a 500 watt motor, which has a peak power of 750 watts and is capable of producing 65 Newton meters of torque to give you that extra push up a hill. Sitting on the side of the motor, we have both a Shimano 7-speed freewheel and a 7-speed derailleur. Above this we have the integrated rear fender, a rear-fitted bike rack with integrated controller and removable battery. I'm not sure how much weight the rear rack is good for, but it's not thin enough to worry that it may collapse when going to your local grocery store. At the rear we can see the integrated light and reflector housed in a 14 amp hour battery. 
Talking of which, this is easily removed or locked into place with a key. At the rear, there's a rough spot to enable you to remove the battery easier. On the top center, there's also a battery indicator to see how much charge you have remaining and a covered charge port for when you need to charge the battery. The seat is comfortable and well padded and has an integrated tail light, which has a button on the underside to switch between its three modes, flash, constant, or off. Please note though, this is not powered by the bike's battery, so a replacement battery would be needed when it runs out. Moving to the front once more, all the wires to the handlebar are shrouded in a sock for that cleaner look and to keep it all together. On the left of the handlebar are these ergonomic handlebar grips, front brake lever, which cuts power to the motor when engaged, a 3.7 inch bike computer with various functions, whilst also showing important info such as your speed, battery life, pedal assist mode, and distance traveled, etc. And just below this, there's also a button to turn on your headlights and another below this for an electronic horn or rather a beep. The right side houses the same grip and brake lever, but with the added Shimano 7-speed gear selector and inner twist throttle. All easy to reach and operate whilst riding. The bike's frame is made completely of 6061 aluminum and comes in two colour options either this grey and orange, or white and pink. Moving on, let's have a quick look at all the accessories that come with the bike. Starting from left to right, first we have an air pump. Cheap and very plastic, but it does the job. Next is the battery charger, which can take four to six hours to charge your battery full. Now, it's worth mentioning, you can charge your battery on or off the bike. Below this is a 13 and 15 millimeter spanner. And below that is a quick release mechanism for the front wheel. Moving right, there's two pedals with the reflected strips. And below that, a very handy multi-tool, which is small enough to fit in your pocket or bag whilst out riding. And lastly, a lock for the bike. Whilst this is a nice inclusion, I would definitely recommend buying another lock for your bike. Switching the bike on and getting started couldn't be easier. Reach under the battery to switch it on. Then move to the bike computer and hold down the power button for three seconds. And that's it, away you go. Switching the bike off is just the reverse process. Hold down the power button for three seconds, then switching the power off at the battery. When your bike arrives, you'll also notice that it's adequately packed. One thing I would suggest though, is rather than lift the bike out of the box, which every bike manufacturer tells you to do, simply get a serrated knife and cut the sides of the box. Making sure that you take great care that the knife doesn't touch any of the contents. You can then fold down the front and use this as a soft working platform to put together the remaining 20% you are left to build. It took me just over an hour to put together the final parts needed and make sure that all the bolts on the bike were tight and secure. So, if this is a bike that interests you, then ideally you should be between five foot two and six foot two and no heavier than 150 kilograms. The bike was surprisingly comfortable to ride. The tires and forks do a great job of cushioning the ride when going over small potholes in the road. The front forks are also non-adjustable, but on a bike like this, I don't feel it would really be a great benefit and would obviously put the price up. The bike is capable of speeds up to 28 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour. And on a full charge of the battery, it's possible to travel between 25 to 62 miles. But 
This is dependent on speed, rider weight, road condition, tyre pressure and air temperature, which is inherent of all electric bikes. The battery uses Samsung 18650 cells and will fully charge in 4-6 to six hours and has a charging cycle of 800 times. The bike is relatively light if the battery is removed and still very rideable. All the wiring on the bike uses water resistant connectors so you shouldn't need to worry if you get caught out in the rain. The tyres are Kenda with a puncture resistant liner but as you can see here I actually got a puncture whilst out testing the bike. Now I have contacted Cyrusha about this and they've told me that they will update them in the future. The bike has a cruise control system too which is a nice inclusion if you just want a nice steady 5 miles per hour cruise without using the pedals. The bike's list priced at the time of this review is just over $1500 or just below 1400 Great British Pounds and it's quite reasonably priced as they offer free shipping worldwide. So with all that said let's go over my pros and cons of the bike. On the pros side for me would be the integrated front and rear light, rear bike rack, easy to ride without the battery, a wide padded saddle with integrated LEDs, five levels of pedal assist, cruise control, speed and distance, the multifunction bike computer and a low noise 500 watt motor, instant power cut to the motor when brakes are engaged and finally price. Now on the con side of things I don't really have many as such but more to do with photos and listed parts on the Cyrusha website. But as I said previously plastic chain guard. My puncture resistant tyres got a puncture but again Cyrusha have already said that they're going to be addressed in the future. Plastic fenders. Now, these are perfectly adequate, but on the website, it clearly shows in some photos that it comes with aluminum fenders. And finally, I think the kickstand could cause a problem with a fully laden bike, but these are easily replaced. And that's about it. Overall, I think it's a good city bike for the price and will make you happy if you decide to buy one. Well, that about wraps things up. If you like the video, then why not consider subscribing to the channel and giving it a thumbs up. If you've bought one or thinking of buying a bike from Russia, then why not consider joining our Facebook owners group, an ever growing friendly community where members share all sorts of tips and tricks with your bike. So that just leaves me to say, Thank you very much for watching, and until the next time, bye-bye.